Hello. I don't really know how much of this I want to show because I don't know if it's going to work or not. But basically I've set the... This is the front strut off my car that has the early spindle and it has the hole in it there. And this spring cup isn't very good. So what I thought I'd try and do is part it off and part off the top bit and the spring cup from one of the good struts the one that's got the broken stub axle and weld them together i spoke to somebody who used to work with these and he said they used to weld them together regularly what i did to get it in the lathe was i put a center mark halfway between these bolts and drilled a center hole in the steering arm uh, this steering arm won't be used. This is just a slave piece to allow me to do that. So the idea is to use this part welded to the top piece of another strut with a weld there. Now th this won't go any further that way because it's against the chuck. So if I put the other one in and just move the table, the thickness of that tool to the right and part it off no hang on a minute no <laughs> don't do that mark move it the thickness of the tool to the right yeah i said it right but i pointed it wrong move it to the right the thickness of the tool the other piece will butt against that okay righto let's um let's take this one out the lathe then and get the other one in had to kind of put this around at an angle because it would have hit on there with these things whizzing. I'll show you what it looks like whizzing round. I just did it slow like that. It's a bit of a run out. Okay, let's get the other one mounted up then and uh, see how I get on. Hello. Okay, I'm continuing this uh, sheer stupidity. I put a file mark there in line with the spindle before I dismantled it. So that's roughly the alignment. This is the off the strut from the car. And this is off the strut from Stratford. Not Stratford. And this is off the strut from Sheffield, this part. And there's the join. And they kind of do butt together quite well there. Now, I did make a mistake. I assume that these bolts were in line with the end of the strut. They're not. They're offset a little bit. So my centre isn't in line with the strut. But I've done them both the same. So, presuming that this is aligned with that and everything's the same it ought to be the same even though it's wrong it's wrong twice so they ought to be the same so what I'm going to do is do a generous V on both parts leaving a small amount of the original um, surface so that I can put them together and then I will weld them I'll tack it here in the lathe and then weld it, you know, on the bench. No sense in wasting time cleaning it up until, you know, you're happy it's going to work. There is oil in it though, so I'll, I'll wash the oil out of this piece. There's no oil in this piece, but there's oil in this piece. Okay, righto, leave it with me then and I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello? Right, just... Right, so there's my welder. Two max in the wire speeds over there. Uh, I'll turn the gas off. A bit low on gas. Okay, there's my welded strut. Um, I did three good beads and then kind of 
three more so three good tacks you know bead tacks and then um, three more beads in between and then uh, some longer beads to join up and I, I think it's come out okay to be honest I think the alignments all right I don't think you know the alignment specs on these cars are sort of hypercritical I'm pretty sure the length's okay um, I'll see what happens when I try and put a insert in so yeah so that's the, the reason I wanted to do this was because my alternative would have been to have one one inch spindle and one 25 mil spindle but now I've got two struts or have I hang on yeah so now I've got two struts that have the early spindles in others this is the strut from the original car and the other strut will be the strut from the original car so I can uh, you know in other words I've used this piece here to repair this strut and then everything is from the original car and I've still got the struts from the other car if I decide I want to go with the bigger spindles okay so that's something just that I wanted to do just to test it out um, a friend of mine told me that they used to do it and uh, it isn't too difficult it's good thick metal it's about eighth inch wall that stuff so there's plenty there to get a good weld into all the loading is predominantly downwards it's a bit of cornering forces but um, uh, the axle on my roadster is welded in a similar way it's still quite warm actually so yeah so there we go <laughs> so I'll clean this up and when I'm ready I can put it in with all the other struts and then make my final decision which ones I'm going to use but at least this one's a sort of viable alternative okay I might as well clean it up while it's in the lathe because I can get good access with the wire brush so I might as well do that okay I'll bring it back when there's more to show here's my strut after um, cleaning up the spring seat is okay it's in good condition the welds okay I'd, I would say the the pitting isn't too deep bear in mind this is a good three three and a half mil thick wall a little bit of mess in there that I need to get out but I've cleaned it all up with a wire wheel it's looking good to be honest yeah that's looking okay so it's just a case of washing it out on the inside just looking for you know good penetration on the weld there yeah that looks okay so we just need to clean all that out down there and give it a coat of paint and then um, clean up the insert that I want to use which will be one of the ones from the um, Sheffield struts that I bought okay so there's a good little job there so now I can have a pair of struts with the same spindle both sides instead of an odd one one side I just do you know what I mean it's like an OCD thing I suppose I could have had them different but I just wanted them the same you, you have to have good confidence in your welding to trust something like that but you know it'll be all right okay Thanks for joining me in the garage. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye. Hello. There's my strut. That's sitting there. I've painted it, and it's just drying. So that's ready to go. That's where I welded it. Here I've got the inserts. Th these are the inserts from the Sheffield struts, right? That one there wasn't very dirty. This one was a bit, a bit more dirty, kind of just very, very light, kind of rust, oily, rusty sort of, not rusty rust, just, just dirty. 
and uh, I put it in the lathe and kind of just cleaned it with a wire brush and this one here had a little bit of kind of surface rust just on this area here so I've cleaned that in the lathe as well so I'm I've assembled that one but I'm going to take it apart again because I want to look at that because when I did this one this one this one is the bush that goes in the end and this washer goes in there and that was got like a bit of surface rust on it and this piece had a bit of surface rust on it and I've cleaned those up with a wire wheel and this is the gland let me look at this one okay it it appears that there's a ring on it so maybe that's the up side so that goes like that because that one the other one hasn't been apart so that goes like that and I'm going to need two hands now this end has a piece of tubing in it that's um, that's the sort of suspension travel limiter that goes in there and then this pokes through that goes through there and then on this end of it you have to get this sort of piston ring started in here just kind of tease it in there is a chamfer Yeah, there it's gone. It's gone. So that's gone in and then it's it's coming out this end now. Then there's this piece here which is a valve. This is the uh the foot valve. Which basically I'm just going to wipe it. This is the foot valve, which basically I'm just going to wipe it. And put it back in the earlier ones were a little bit more complicated than this and I don't know but they might be adjustable but I, I didn't really want to get into the realms of fiddling about with them I'd just be glad if they kind of work reasonably well there's like a, a flat disc there that is you know a valve And that goes in this end here so that can go that that can go into one of the uh, struts I just thought I just thought I would show you what I'm dealing with for people that may not have ever seen inside one of these because all the lighter ones are all um, you know non dismantleable aren't they you can't get inside them okay I'll bring you back in a bit then bye I'll show you something else that I noticed earlier. You can imagine this is in the strut and this doesn't rotate. Can you see there's like a heavier wear contact on that side than there is on that side? And can you see that there's like um, a polished area this side that there isn't on that side? That might not be so obvious. Uh, and they're opposite so there there and there are the areas of wear and that's because there's always like a bending moment so what I'm going to do when I reassemble this well there's a little bit of little bit of mark in there I've just rubbed a stone over that and so there's no lumps so if there's only a little dent if something if anything at all that's might have altered what i was going to say what i was going to do is turn these around 180 degrees so that the the wear part is on the other side but that that part there is on the other side yeah i don't know what i'm talking about ignore me side that says this side down so the groove does go at the top then cool 
right -o. I hope you found that interesting this this is the insert from the other one and this is that kind of dirty slightly rusty sort of dirty finish that I was talking about like that one was that I've cleaned okay right -o. this is why I got my gloves on because it's rather messy stuff to work with that's the other thing look that's the other early bottom um, foot valve which has um, some sort of a valve in it which I'm not going to mess about with okay right out I'll bring you back when there's more to show then cheers hello here's one of my front struts in the pipe vise I'm going to put one of those inserts into it so I thought I'd put the camera up and just kind of show generally how it goes don't for one minute think that I'm an expert at this I did a couple of these you know 40 years ago I haven't done any since <laughs> what I did do though I just took the die grinder and just licked away the threads there where they've been deformed so that I'm not deforming the threads as the cap is going in and there's the cap and I've just cleaned that up with a wire wheel so that's nice and clean so I hope that will do the job Okay, that's gone down the right distance, so I'm assuming that the bottom seat has seated. But what I want to do now is put some oil in. Now, right, rightly or wrongly, I'm going to use hydraulic jack oil. And this is 500 mil. And it's supposed to take something like 375 mil. I'll, I'll ch it was written in a post. I'll check it and flash it on the screen. So let's call it good at that. I don't want to overdo it because I don't want it splashing out. And there's a little filler thing on the side to top it up. Okay. There we are. I did just try this thread to see if it starts okay. Now sometimes what you can do is turn a thing backwards. Like that. Maybe. What you don't want to do is cross thread it. That famous last words.
have to have another go at making a tool for this, although I don't really expect to be doing it very more times, I suppose. You can feel it, you can feel it pumping. Okay, that's just gone tight. Not tight tight, but little bit tight so I don't think you have to murder it Ooh. popping out okay okay I'll call it good at that it's stopped Spice in here. Okay. Right, I've got to put a little bruise on the thing now. Seems a shame because it doesn't align with any of the other bruises. Still, got to do it. I think I'll just do one there. Well, it works. You know, that's all right. It's good. Okay. I've got a bit mad with the safety goggles now because I hurt my eye recently. I haven't got. I've still got slightly blurred vision in my left eye. that for now I'll leave it at that for now I've got the insert in I've got a couple of other things I want to do so I'll bring it but you get the idea so I'll bring it back when I'm ready to finish assembling it okay right I'll catch you on the next one cheers then okay off camera I've just done a little job and it's just an idea that I had right I mentioned it briefly before. Here is a somewhat dirty spring plate. And you can see that if you hold it with this piece sticking over here, the flat is near the top there. Now that flat is a little bit worn away because it's been kind of worn by being forced. So what I've just done This one is at the bottom. I've just I've just put a little bit of weld on there and filed it. So what that will do So what that will do is rotate this rod 
90, uh, 190 degrees like that. So the side that was getting all the wear before won't be getting the wear now. And, um, you know, and the same on the piston. The opposite side will be taking the thrust. So you never know. It, it might just help. You know, there's a side that isn't worn. Let's use that side. I'll go and get all the pieces and get them clean and then I'll come back and just show it being assembled up just just for interest. There's the first part, the inner piece. There's the top bearing. You can see that the surface is good in the bearing there, look. Can you see? There should be like a, a lip here, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. That's fell off years ago. like an oversized nut it's um I believe it's five eighths I'm not sure I can check that but it's um a one and one sixteenth so I hope I can find my one and one sixteenth found it Now the only thing that stops it turning is that, you know, that area that I welded up. The bear, the, this turns and that, that, that's the orientation like that. Okay, good. Clamps, good. I think I need to hold that in the vise so I can tighten that up. So I need to take it out of this thing here. Okay, that's just gone tight now. Bang still moves. Shreds tight. That's good. Hopefully I haven't missed a bit of YouTube gold by not filming it, but um, I cleaned up all these surfaces because this is a very sort of slight wedge fit. There's a taper. So the surfaces are all clean. I oiled the threads very lightly, cleaned the bolts, cleaned the threads, clean, um, tightened up the bolts and torqued them to 40 newton meters. I don't know if that's the right number, but that's about as tight as you want to go for a uh, 3 8 bolt. And then I used the tab washer and I used this tab here because that hadn't used, been used before. And I did use that tab there, but, um, you know, I, I sort of had to, really. 
Okay, so the steering arm is fixed on. So that strut is ready to go on the car, more or less. I've got to, I've got to just find a way of topping up the oil. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, but I will have a look at that, and then that can go back on the car. Actually, thinking about it, righto. So there's the steering arm fitted. So I'll flip it back up the other way and see if I can top up the oil. Okay, back in a bit. Okay. So, other than topping the oil and then assembling it all up, that's ready to go on the car. I've got a bit of remedial paintwork to do. That can all be done after the event, can't it? Okay. Righto. One early pattern strut ready to go back on. Almost. Hello. Uh, I'm experimenting with another little idea. I've made a little shroud that goes around here. It's just um, a circle of rubber that's um, got a hole in it. I've stretched it over there and kind of let it come down around there. And that bearing is in the, the correct orientation for the straight ahead position. So that just sort of goes like that. I just put a heavy duty cable tie around it. So hopefully that will stop water going under there. Or at least, you know, try and dissuade water from going under there. Okay, right. So that's, that's just another little idea I wanted to try. And I need to make a little gasket for up here as well. They had like a thin rubber gasket on there. I'll probably just make one out of gasket paper. I don't think many people will even know that they're supposed to have a gasket on there. I just don't know, to be honest. Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll make a little gasket for the top. And then that's, you know... I can put this on one side then, and then when I'm ready, that can go on the car. Okay, I just thought I'd show you that little detail up there. Um, yesterday, I built up that strut there. And I think I am going to just put it so it's hanging in the car there. But what I thought might be a good idea would be to clean that chassis leg all the way along there and put a splash of paint on it back to sort of underneath the floor there and then I can put the chassis I can put the suspension leg in and um, you know it won't be in the way so I'm going to give that a go I'm going to take the wing off. No sense in struggling. You'll see I've got eye protection on. I've still got slightly blurred vision in my left eye.
I painted the thing and I've made a gasket and put that on the strut and I'm just going to sling the strut underneath and hopefully just get a nut to start. I don't really know why I'm putting this on but you know I might as well put it on the car as have it hanging around the garage. Right out. There's my gasket and I've greased it all up as well. Got the original type locking nuts. I'll take them off and clean them up before I put them on properly, but you know, just for now, I'll just get them in place. Okay, there we go. So I haven't done any of the cleaning yet of any of the other suspension parts. Um, but once again, I'm not quite sure exactly ex how I'm going to do it, but I can do the other strut, which I might do. And I can do, clean all the steering parts and the track control arms and put those all back on. And I want to, I want to, um, the steering parts which are hanging down, look, it's hanging down. I want to get that off and get the um, track rod ends cleaned up and freed up so that the steering, you know, so that I can set the tracking when it's all done. I could just assume that it's right, but... Anyway, the strut is in place. It's a bit marred up, but I can just touch that in with a bit of aerosol paint when uh, when I've kind of got it back together a bit more. And I can put the brakes on, and I can put the hubs on. So yes, it's coming together quite well. Okay, thanks for joining me in the garage. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.